Well, hi there. You might be aware that earlier this year, we went up to Nerd, and while I was there, I got to hang out with some incredible king cobras, including Lilith, who is the only leucistic king cobra in the United States and one of only two in the entire world. But when I told people that, a lot of people were like, but Tyler Nolan has one. And uh, the reality is that he does not. He does not have a leucistic king cobra. I asked him, but what he does have might be just as cool. Just don't tell Lilith. Don't tell him. <laughs> and that is Kilo, his leucistic monocled cobras and his other monocled cobras as well. One thing that we mentioned about king cobras in our video about them is that king cobras are not true cobras. They're not in the genus Naja. They're actually more closely related to mambas than they are to the true cobras. The monocled cobras, on the other hand, like Kilo, they are true cobras. And while they don't get quite as long as king cobras, they are plenty long and definitely extremely impressive snakes. They have considerably broader, just wider, but also shorter hoods than king cobras. So if you're trying to figure out if a snake that you're thinking about getting is a king cobra or a true cobra, that'd be one of the things to look for. Their venom, and maybe you disagree about this, but their venom is, to my understanding, actually more potent, potentially, than that of a king cobra. King cobras just make more of it. Yeah, monocle for sure. I would definitely much rather get bit by a king again than a monocle. <laughs> Especially right now, with the way that the anti-venom is down here. Oh my. Way more readily available. Yeah, I hadn't... Do you have any? Anti-venom? Yeah. No, you have to be... You have to be a licensed physician to have anti-venom. A lot of people, it's a common misconception really? that people think. A lot of people are like, oh, you must have a bunch of anti-venom. Didn't Tom house. have several vials? He did, but Tom is also really good friends with a lot of people high up there. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So Jeff Fobb, the guy who actually helped save my life, the guy who's in charge of Venom 1 down here in South Florida, Jeff Fobb had a lot of different kinds of anti-venom readily available. Luckily, we were in the area. Jeff was actually off of work that day. And we called him. Jeff was in the shower, actually. He just had a <laughs> Oh, yeah, and he feeling. happened to listen. Got out of the shower, answered the phone. Had I think Jeff had 10 vials on him already. Rushed the first 10 vials to the hospital, which was within 20 minutes of his house. And then we had to airlift a bunch more down from South Carolina. I've seen monocled cobras apparently sometimes kill in like less than 60 minutes. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Monocled and that, that doesn't give you a lot of time for something to rush you some oh, antivenom from. That's a bad bite. I so long story short, they're terrifying. Don't get bit. <laughs> so I think obviously the question here is, is the monocled cobra a good pet? And is it the best pet reptile for you? Pet? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about pets. I think loose word. I mean, they're my pets, but I'm also, it's different, you know? Yes. I, mean, I, I live in South Florida. I grew up working on underground reptiles. Like, this is just, I was raised doing this. So I don't, I just don't know. A lot of people ask me, they're like, how did you get into venomous animals? How did you get into doing this? And it's just like, I don't know. I, just, I was just raised doing this. When I was a yeah. kid, instead of getting a job at like McDonald's or the grocery store or whatever it was, I started working at Underground when I was 13 and started working with venomous snakes. And that's what I was drawn towards. And that's all I really know. So You had the right upbringing. You yeah. know, for and, and that, that's a big thing is... This is this is the kind of hobby that you need a, a mentor for. Oh yeah, 100%. In, you know, like like in, in an afternoon, I came a long way as far as how I feel about handling king cobras. Yeah, dude, you know, because because if you got the right person to teach you, but it's not something you want to learn like while you're in the air trying to figure out skydiving. No, hundred percent. You know, and and that's 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 how it can be. Right. Handling a non-venomous snake is definitely more. Uh, there's no danger factors, you're not gonna die, you know what I mean? You can kind of just like, you can just grab a ball python out the cage and if it bites you, yeah, you're gonna get bit, it's not gonna be the end of the world, but like you can <laughs> figure out that animal after after that. As but with a monocle, it yeah, may exactly. literally be the end of the you world for you. You need to know how to handle a snake in order to take a monocle cobra oh, out of yeah. the cage 100% or any anything venomous, you know how, you need to know how to read their behaviors, how to, and just know how they rattlesnakes put their head down before they strike cobras hood up before they strike uh there's 
different characteristics with different snakes. Mm -hmm. Well, and that, that's actually what I want to talk about first is handleability. Yeah. Handle so for handleability, we're giving the monocled cobra a score of zero out of five. Zero. Uh, zero. Now, now, now. This is this is for most people, obviously. Uh, so and, you know, and and it's like the reality is, I mean, you can you can sort of handle a great white shark if you know if you really knew what you were doing. It's doable, it's but doable. it gets a zero, right? Like for most people, handling a monocled cobra but, but probably gonna end real one, badly. Though, well, if it's a little bit doable. I'll, I'll, I'll tell I'll tell you, I gave I gave gaboon vipers and rattlesnakes a one because can you give a monocle a zero? You're gonna use a hook. Uh, handling a rattlesnake, now maybe these giants would yeah. be a different story, but but you know, if, if I'm talking about a small rattlesnake, it's a lot like picking up a ball python with a hook. You know, they're kind of rigid and heavy. They they're, they're, they they can dart on you, but you know, you can you can handle them entirely with the hook. Right. The monocle, you've gotta have a hand on it, and and the hook, and they're fast, and they're moving around, and it, you know, the king is also, and he, the, one of the things about the monocle and the king and, and uh, mambas, I also mm -hmm. scored. They're they're long enough that they can kind of get back on that hook. So even with a hook, you've really, really, really got to know what you're doing. Can you think of a snake harder to handle? Uh, I'm I'm gonna have Other to say mambas. rattlesnakes. I I would give I would give cobras a one, and I would give rattlesnakes and vipers a zero, just because. And I'm not talking about free handling. This is yeah no safe handling with a hook. You know what I mean. And even free handling, we can get into that in just a little bit about that word. I hate that word. Free handling. <laughs> I don't say it. I don't believe in it. Whatever. But rattlesnakes, like, dude, these albino rattlesnakes I have behind us right here, I have these al these rattlesnakes right here are puppy dog tame. Puppy dog tame. Puppies will still bite you. They're all pretty, the time. They're pretty tame. Puppies bite all the time. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> little, little nibbles. Yeah. Whatever. I know it's a bad analogy. I got to come up with a new one. The albino rattlesnakes, okay? My cobras. My cobras are going to try to get away from you when you're handling them. So you take a cobra out the hook, he's probably not going to come right back around at you. He's going to try to get away from you. Which is why I think that it's honestly safer to handle a monocle than it would be to handle a gaboon viper or a rattlesnake. Because my rattlesnakes, first off, my cobras don't have heat pits, okay? So they can't sense, they can't thermal regulate the room and what's around them, okay? My vipers can so that makes that animal way more accurate than my cobras. My cobras are, they're very inaccurate strikers. I mean, they're accurate to a sense, but like when it comes down to it, they're super inaccurate. They hood up, they kind of like, you know what I mean? Rattlesnakes are complete opposite. Rattlesnakes and gaboon vipers, they have that thermal imaging. As soon as you touch them, that tactile response on the back of their tail, they turn around, they look right at you, they strike out. There's no telegraphing of the strike or anything like that. They don't give any signs. They just straight strike. They're super, super fast. And not only are they super fast, they are super accurate. So that's the only reason why I would say like they would get a zero and the monocles would get a one in my book. Because mm. honestly, I feel like a monocle cobra is way, 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 a hundred times easier to handle than a rattlesnake. A mean rattlesnake? If I had to pick a mean monocle or a mean rattlesnake, I'm gonna pick the monocle all day because it's gonna be way more easier for me to, to determine not getting bit by that, that cobra rather than a rattlesnake. Even, even with a hook? Even with a hook. All right, well, I, I will upgrade them then. Yeah. For handleability, we give the monocled cobra a score of one out of five. And honestly, like with a hook, since you wanna talk about that, Double hooking a monocle cobra is way harder than double hooking. I mean, it, it, dep it depends, you know? I'm gonna use one hook for these monocles and tail them because it's a little easier. They're not gonna be able to, uh, I've come to find out that, that monocles and cobras, they won't really use their body weight to come back around. Sometimes kings will, kings mm -hmm. is a totally different ball game. But your rattlesnakes and your vipers, they use their body and they use their muscles to pull themselves back around at you. Yep. So honestly, I think that that's more dangerous and even double hooking an animal. I don't know if you've ever double hooked a rattlesnake before, but dude, it's hard. Holding an animal with two hooks and juggling it, making sure they stay on both hooks, putting them in the bin, it's, it's difficult. Mm. Especially when, like, dude, these, these albino rattlesnakes that I have are so hard to handle bro like even for me i have a hard time sometimes because they are just they strike the entire time they don't ride a hook it's a totally different ball game whoa oh 
Oh, I'm back in Utah. Where's my cool tiger shirt? Oh, well, I guess while I'm here, I might as well talk to you about my Ridge wallet, which was launched on Kickstarter by father and son team Daniel and Paul Kane. And they're celebrating their eighth anniversary, not of being father and son, but of the successful funding and launch of RidgeWallet.com. They've sold over a million wallets. And to celebrate, they're doing a 15% off their entire store sale for Black Friday, but in March. And the discount will be right on the site, so you don't need any special codes from here or anything like that. You can just go over there, get 15% off. And they've got a whole bunch of other cool designs, so go check them out. Holy cow, they got a gold one! RidgeWallets.com. And I'm not sure if they all have this ability, but I think if I rub it just right, it'll send me back to Florida. What's up, bro? How you doing? Um, you ready for this? I don't know. I don't you, know. You're good right there. You're, good. you're Perfect. in a safe area. The thing about this is it's not a King Cobra. A King Cobra can come flying out the cage at you mm -hmm. and it's a totally different ballgame. Kilo is not going to do that. So you're safe. You're going to actually come You get a little bit closer. I'll keep you safe. Don't worry. So this is Kilo, my leucistic monocle male. All right. He is a favorite on my channel. I'm sure you guys oh. would like to see him. He, he's a favorite, I think, anywhere. Hey, he's awesome. He's very cool. So what did you want to uh, find out about this guy? Well, I wanted to talk about handling monocled cobras generally. And you were saying that not all monocled cobras are created equal as far as handling goes. Yeah, I mean, not any, every snake is different. You know what yes. I mean? Whether it's an aggressive species of snake or if it's a, uh, it's a, it's a known, like, more chill snake. Like, obviously, like, ball pythons are known for being very chill well-mannered snakes. Now, every monocle is not created equal. Some are psychopaths and some are super mean. Obviously, I know how my snakes are acting. I've had this snake for a couple of years now. So I, I just know. I can open up his cage, see how he's acting today, and just go off of that, you know? Um, mm -hmm. His cage is, it's what? His lights have been on for a couple hours, so he's definitely warmed up. He's alert. He's awake. Yesterday, I tried feeding him. He wasn't really hungry yesterday, so I'm not really too worried about him having a crazy feeding response right now. He's a pretty chill snake for the most part. so Very alert, though. Very alert. Now, with cobras, obviously, they're going to hood up. When they, when they want to be defensive, they're going to hood up and they're going to look around and they're going to try to figure out what is being a threat to them, and that's just the, the cobra way. You see how mm -hmm. he's... He's kind of exploring his cage. He's smelling around. Maybe he is getting a little bit hungry. He's a pain to feed. That's the only thing about uh, care and maintenance with monocles is that sometimes they, they don't only just eat rats. A lot of my monocles sometimes go back to chicks, and uh, some will even eat snakes. So Yeah, and they do in the wild. They eat all of that do. stuff. Same thing with a king. Like king... You were talking about uh, the care of them. You know, it's kind of hard because not some people feed kings rodent diets and some people feed kings just snake diets. My king is just on a snake diet. He won't touch rodents, but some people it's the other way around. You know, one, one of the things I wanted to mention about feeding these is with everything else about cage maintenance, if you have a divider in there or a locked box, you can do it safely. Right. Yeah. But feeding them, you cannot. No. Feeding them, you have to get in there with it. You have to open it up, and that opens the door to escapes and all sorts of exciting events that could happen. Yep. And we, um, yeah, we definitely don't want that happening. No. But yeah, I don't have any lock boxes on any of my cages. Um, all my all my snakes are, I know them very well. They're not, they're not really that mean. I do have some like my rattlesnakes. I was saying before, they're the worst snakes that I have in here. And you were I saying one of your monocles will jump out at you. That monocle up top is yes, a psychopath. But Kilo right here, he is pretty awesome, and he's very handleable. So like I can easily just reach in his cage like this. You see how he puts his hood up? Yes. Now, I like snakes that telegraph how they're feeling. False exactly. water cobra is the same way. If he's having a rough day, he he lets you know. Yeah, no, and Kilo, I could just take out just like this and hold totally fine. No problems, okay? Now, I would never do that with that other monocle up there because he literally comes at me mouth open all of the time. This snake, thank God, the only time he's ever open mouth struck at me is the first day that I had him. 
and he has not done it since. And yeah, it was definitely a sketchy little instance, yes. but uh, <laughs> I haven't had an instance like that yet. I handle him all the time. I do not pose a threat to the snake at all is what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say, but he is a beautiful cobra. I hold him just like this all the time. He's a super sweet little boy. He's just great. It's different. Now, Tom Crutchfield says all the time, the only difference between... Uh, Tom says all the time, an animal reacts how he's kept, okay? There, hold on. I think I messed up that. Uh, so the Tom quote that I was trying to remember yes. is once the kept and the keeper lose fear of each other, that's when the magic happens. And that is exactly true. You know what I mean? So like, you can have a mean animal, but once they are like, Tom's croc monitors, okay? Tom's got seven, nine foot croc monitors. That, it's one of the worst bites out there. Like it could tear your hand off your fingers. It is a horrible, horrible, terrible bite. It's not venomous. It's not going to kill you, but it could kill you. You get bit by a big croc monitor on the neck, Dude, you're done. Mm -hmm. But he goes in there, he handles these animals, and when you open up its enclosure and you go in the cage with it, there's positive reinforcements. You're feeding the animal. You're not going in there and grabbing him and throwing him in a trash can and being abusive and aggressive to this animal. Then, yes, they're going to be scared of you. If I were to go into this animal's cage, grab him all times, throw him in there, a lot of people with cobras, they think cobras are cool and they, they try to piss cobras off all the time. That's the thing that I hate the most with people that free handle things. They try to get the cobra to hood up. They try to get them to strike at them. They try to, they make them aggressive. You know what I mean? Which is totally opposite of what I try to do. Yes. I try to make sure my animals have great enclosures. Everything's kept super clean. They're kept nicely. I don't, I never put my animals in harm's way or make them fearful of anything. You mm -hmm. know, some of my snakes, the meaner ones, I don't obviously hold like I do Kilo, but Kilo, dude, there, there's no threat to me. There's no reason why he would try to bite me. You know what I mean? Other than feeding response. And obviously when I take the animal out of the cage, I'm aware of how he's acting at the moment. And if he's being mean and he's, he's striking and stuff like that, Dude, I'm not going to hold him like I just did. You know what I mean? Yep. It's just, you don't do that. Yeah. And free handling is, obviously it's way more than a four letter word, but free handling is a four letter word in my house. Um, I'm, I hate that word. I'm not a free handler. I don't like when people are like, oh, Tyler, I don't like free hands things, blah, blah, blah. I'm a handler, okay? Mm -hmm. I was born and raised here in South Florida. I love these animals. I've been handling them since I was a little kid. And you can't just like look at something in a cage and totally like have appreciation for it. You know what I mean? Oh, 100%. It's like you can have a lot of appreciation for an animal behind glass, but like holding the animal and interacting with the animal, dude, that's everything. You know what I mean? Like this just like, that's what makes Kilo so cool. Like a lot of people on my channel, this is my this is their favorite snake just because, bro, he lets me do this to them. He's not he's not a mean snake. He doesn't try to bite me. He's a super sweet cobra. He does not dude, he's like look at this. This is crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I can literally put his hand on my on his head on my hand and I don't have to worry about him being super aggressive trying to bite me or anything like that because this snake is not fearful of me he does not i'm not a threat so the only reason why a snake would try to bite me is if i go in there and i grab it like if i go and grab a snake like this oh yeah he's gonna turn around because you're a you. predator exactly dude but if he's just like my indigo snake which is not venomous he's not gonna try to bite me either because he knows i'm not going in there i'm not grabbing him i'm not trying to hurt him he has no reason to be defensive with me at all whatsoever yeah i'm not telling Definitely don't go grabbing your cobras and don't go <laughs> free handing snakes like that. You don't know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. You don't you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like that's the difference. I'm a trained professional. I've been doing this my whole life. That's an important point of differentiation, I think. You know, a lot of people are afraid of them and that's it's you're gonna have a bad experience if you're afraid of them. You need to respect them. You need to respect what they can do. Respect and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Know about them, know about how they act. Just different different signs of aggression, you know? He's the only cobra that I could hold like that. I would never hold any of my other snakes like that, like, at all. Oh, Maybe yes. if I have gloves on, I have venom defender gloves, which I could hold the snakes with, that's awesome. But, like, Kilo is the only snake that I am almost 100% confident that 
he's never gonna take a strike at me. He hopefully will never bite me. Mm. But I do know the circumstances. I do know I know what that's like getting bit. I've been bit by a King Cobra before. This was actually at Tom Crutchfield's house a few years ago. I know what that's like. I trust me, I never wanna go through that experience ever again. But I still like handling my snakes. You and, know? you know, and and that that's that's an important thing because we we all take risks, right? We 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 you know you you can go through your life and take zero risks, and bad things can still happen to you. Yeah, 100%. If you take more risks, right? You, the chances the chances go up. Definitely go up. And, and, you know, and it's some it's something you know when I when I watch you or Chandler with these things, like there's there's no part of me that's like they shouldn't be allowed to do that. You you guys are aware of of the risks of what you're doing. Like I, I watch this, like you know if you do that enough times. Sooner or later, something's gonna go Play all right. Play fire every day, you're gonna get burned. Well, that that is an incredible animal. Yeah, he's awesome. I, man. And, you know, and, and, and the way you handle him, it's exactly the way that I handle my false water cobra. Yeah. Even though I know that the, the consequences are he very could different. Bite you, and if you get bit by false water, it's gonna suck. Yeah. But and it's and it's happened to me. I've been I've been bitten yeah. by the false water cobra. You know, like it's that personality is the same, and that's that's something that I think a lot of people don't understand is. You know, venomous snakes aren't necessarily a, a different sort of a thing, and so you can you can handle them with exactly the same likelihood of a bite uh, as other similarly tempered non-venomous snakes. It's just it's just that you know, like if you are a person who handles non-venomous snakes on a regular basis, sometimes you get bitten, and it's not a big deal. Well, a lot of the thing when it's is them. with doing this every day. Doing it every day makes it dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just because you get so comfortable around these animals that I just, I'll come in here, this is every day, you know what I mean? This is where I live, this is my house, this is my venomous room, okay? I come in here, I clean cages every day. Sometimes you're not on your toes all the time, you just come in here, I'm like a, I'm like a robot, you know? I just come in here, I'm like, oh, water, cleaning, boom, 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 take this cage out. You don't think 100%. So that's when accidents happen, is when you're not on top of your, on top of your game, 100%, mm -hmm. you know? Well, let's let's talk about availability because one one thing I notice with with monocled cobras is I mean you're not you're not gonna see them at your pet shop. It's a heck of a pet shop if you do. Mm -hmm. You're you're not gonna see them at most expos unless it's a venomous expo. Yeah. But if you want a monocled cobra, you could have one tomorrow. Yeah, and they're cheap. Uh, yes, I, so so like I, I'm giving them a score of two out of five because you probably have to go online. You need to find a breeder. Yeah, but they're not but hard to it's find. not hard to do. Yeah. If 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 availability is the reason that you're not getting a monocled cobra, monocled cobras aren't for you. Yeah, exactly. right. Like you don't know how to use Google. You yeah. probably shouldn't have a monocled cobra. Yeah, probably not. And when it comes to upfront costs, this is a snake that actually produces a lot of babies, and there aren't yeah. that many people who are right for one. Right. So it seems like the snakes themselves not that expensive. No, uh, I mean uh, a leucistic monocle. Mm, that's a different ballgame. All white, beautiful. Okay, Lilith, for example, Lilith, uh, leucistic king cobra. I think Lilith was like twenty or thirty grand or something like that. That is not nearly as bad as I would have imagined. Twenty, thirty grand. I believe. Don't don't take me. Don't quote me exactly on that. I just I'm trying to remember what Kevin told me, and that's around what I remember. A leucistic monocle cobra, six hundred to a thousand dollars. That's ridiculous. Huge difference. A regular monocle cobra, a hundred bucks. Yep. Nothing. Well, okay. So this has been awesome. Yeah. This has been way awesome. And th like, th thanks for getting him out. I want. I want to. I want to talk about uh, another snake real quick. Just. Just to wrap up. This is Ozzy. We had Ozzy out earlier. Ozzy's right below this monocled cobra. If. Uh, if. If. If I pointed. You know. If. 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 if your enclosures weren't labeled in here. Bring people in. I go. There's a monocled cobra, that's an all black monocled cobra, and uh, you know, down, down here I got a spectacled cobra. 99% of people wouldn't bat an eye because this snake looks like a cobra. Look. Functionally, this snake is a North American king cobra, and what this is is an eastern indigo snake, which is an absolutely unbelievable dream pet snake that really, I mean, they remind me so much of cobras, it's ridiculous, and yet, this is so much more reasonable of an animal to actually own, to interact with. If what you think you want is a cobra, probably what you want is something like this eastern indigo. They're unbelievable. Snakes. They're harder to get. This is a threatened species that is protected, so you have to have a permit to have an animal like this, but there's also Kribos, there's Texas indigos, mm -hmm. There's uh, 
the poor, the poor man's indigo, which is a uh, Mexican black king snake. Yep, I, I, on my false water cobra, beautiful. a lot of the reason yeah, that I waters. fell for those was how much they reminded me yeah, of indigos. False water cobras, even the prices on those guys are way better oh, than the price of this. Absolutely, which is why I have one. Yeah, the temperament is great. Super sweet animals, can't kill you. Beautiful, you got that iridescent, that iridescence on his scales. Super, super smooth, super black. Beautiful, and he's not even full grown. He's gonna get way bigger than this. He's probably gonna be a seven, eight foot long snake, and he's probably pushing like four and a half, five right now. So he's amazing. Yeah, okay. Can I hold him again? Yeah, I love this guy. Oh, yeah, he's super cool. He's incredible. Tyler, thank you so much for having me over here. Yeah, of course. We should get Kilo out next with the hook. Wanna do that? All right, Clint. This is for you. Let me grab one also. Back up, plan. Watch awesome. this cage. This cage is open. I'm going to handle Kilo, the monocled cobra. Yeah. One of my favorite hooks. Dude, I've had this snake hook for 20 years. Who made it? Midwest. MidwestTongs.com. All right, go. Yeah, that might be like the most gorgeous snake I've ever seen. So yeah, he's backing up on me. Yeah. Which... So that's just because you're grabbing him. Hooking him too, too far forward. forward. So if you go more more towards mid body, get him kind of parallel. And so now you can just easily coax him back into his cage just like that. That's going on. Once he sees his cage, he'll go right back into it. Just like that. Piece of cake. You're a pup. Hey. Thank you. Very late. Whew, as always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Come on in. Wait a whole What what you guys doing in here? Hmm. Oh, snake stuff. You've got a cobra on your back. Oh right my now. god. Is see. this a friendly cobra? Uh, relatively. It's black mamba. Look at this. Oh, yes. this is the black mamba? Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I see. Very crazy. Yes, yes. I've seen these in the wild here. I didn't <laughs> know you had black mambas in the wild here. It's only when they get away. Yeah. Well, guys, I don't mean to interrupt. I'm here to film my video. So, mm, nice. guys, uh, thanks for watching and uh, rattle on. All right, are we done now? <laughs>